These days, every car manufacturer and their sister is producing EVs. And why wouldn't they? That's where the market is at. Many people believe that if they buy an EV, they are saving the planet. Although that might not be the case, that's not what this video is about. Today, I want to explore some more synthetic fuel options. So we all know about the e-fuels Porsche is working on, but Enios, a Japan-based energy and fuel company, has been hard at work developing ways to keep the internal combustion engine alive. And not just in new cars, but a way to keep our existing cars on the road whilst lowering our carbon footprint. You see, this Japanese petroleum company organized test runs of a Toyota Prius plug-in hybrid and a GR86, which they filled with a locally produced e-fuel made from CO2 and hydrogen. Now the two vehicles were put to test on Sunday, May 28, 2023, at the Toyota Traffic Safety Center, Mobilita, which is located next to the Fuji Speedway in Japan. For the demonstration run, the fuel tanks of the Prius and the GR86 were filled with a mixture of 10% e-fuel and 90% regular petrol. The press release doesn't mention any mechanical modifications to the vehicles, but they were covered in fancy liveries, hinting that the mixture is compatible with their stock powertrains. Now, I know what you're thinking, 10% is an old lot, but this was just a test run to see how the vehicles reacted to the fuel. And since the test was successful, the next one will probably feature a higher mixture of the e-fuel. And if I have to guess, this fuel probably works on the same principles as the e-fuels Porsche is working on. And the end goal of all of these fuels is to create a fuel that can be used in any car that takes existing CO2 out of the air through carbon capture projects and mixes it with hydrogen made from renewable energy to throw in any internal combustion engine powered car. Recycling CO2 in a way, if that makes sense, which in turn means that the cars don't create any new CO2 emissions. Tuniaro Satu, president and CEO of Toyota, test drove the vehicle saying that they felt no different in stock and that they drove as intended by the manufacturer. Enios suggests that the synthetic fuel is chemically similar to gasoline, but can be made using hydrogen from renewable sources and CO2 recovered from factories. So I think my assumption on no additional mods needed is correct. So why e-fuels? Well, among the advantages of e-fuels is the fact that they can use the existing infrastructure in terms of transportation, storage and distribution. At the same time, they have great energy density and are largely compatible with the current powertrain technology, which means you don't have to go out and buy a new car. That's something that many forget. All of us don't have the cash to go out and buy a brand new quote-unquote green car. But if there were cheap ways for us to make our existing cars greener, we would do it with a smile. And that's where Porsche's e-fuel and even this fuel comes in. No modification is needed, just a different fuel. Only issue with Porsche's e-fuel is that it's quite expensive. Now, I've no idea what Ineos e-fuel will go for, but it is in the early stages, so it will probably still be quite expensive. Now, I do have to mention that there's still a lot of work that needs to be done until e fuels are ready to take over the world. Ineos is currently planning a small-scale production with the capacity of a single barrel of e-fuel per day. Takishi Saito, president and CEO of Ineos, said that the company will start with a low-carbon mixture of petrol, synthetic fuels and biofuels before establishing a large-scale production of e-fuels towards 2030. Now, if you didn't know, a massive e-fuel production facility is being built in Texas as we speak, with the end goal of producing e-fuels in large quantities and lowering the cost for us, the consumer. I did make a video on that, so if that's something you would want to see, I'll leave a pop-up so you can go and watch it after this. Anyways, 2030 is still a long ways away, but it is worth our time to invest into fuels like this. You see, I love the idea of hydrogen-powered cars, but that would only help the next generation of cars. To convert all the cars to run on pure hydrogen is super complicated and in some cases almost impossible, where fuels like this can be used as a drop-in replacement for traditional fossil fuels. But let me know down below what you think. Like I said, I'm on the Hydrogen Fan Club and eagerly awaiting news on new developments. But we need ways to make our older cars greener as well. And e-fuels at this moment seems to be the best solution. But let me know down below if you know of any other solutions for our older cars. And um, also let me know if you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you did like it, you'll most probably like most of my other stuff. So just go through my channel, see if there's something else you like. I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, eh?